What's going on, everybody? I had a wonderful conversation with Lucy Pesnick. I think you're going to really enjoy her. She is positive, full of energy. She just had me laughing and smiling. I wish I had that much energy, but I'm following her now. We're friends. I think you're going to enjoy this conversation. She's a very successful entrepreneur. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more great interviews like this. And enjoy. Here's Lucy Pesnick. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner. And today I have Lucy Pesnick. And I didn't even chop the name up, so that's good for me. If you follow me, I am known to chop names up. Uh, it's a great way to break ice with people, get them to start talking about something. She is a national speaker, coach, and entrepreneur. And as I do every week, I ask guests to tell me about themselves and how they get to where they are today now in 2024. Welcome, Lucy. How are you? Hi, Coach Clarence. I'm so, I'm blessed and highly favored. Super excited to be here with you today. All right. Blessed and highly favored. That sounds like church talk. I hear that a lot. <laughs> Um, so, um, tell everybody about yourself and how you get to where you are right now. Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up in the suburbs of Detroit and I like to say that I was just a little girl with a big dream ever since I can remember, I was absolutely obsessed with horses, like eat, drink, sleep. Like I would pray at night, dear God, please let me just dream that one day that please let me dream that I'm riding a horse. So that way it feels like I actually did it. And like, I can't tell you how many times I would like be dreaming that my left foot would go in the stirrup. And as I was throwing my leg over on the saddle, poof, I'd wake up and I was like, oh man, it's like, I almost did it in my dreams. Uh -huh. So needless to say, I was begging my dad for a horse since the time that I could speak. And I, blew, my, my, my parents were blue collar workers. My mom had two jobs, two factory jobs. So it was very much so out of the realm of possibilities to purchase, let alone maintain a horse. Um, but I never gave up on my dream. And I was always like Napoleon Hill says, all you have to have is a burning desire. Desire is what is the is the beginning to any success in life. And so I found that at a very young age, I just followed my purpose, followed my passion. And the day I turned 16 was the day I got my driver's license. And the day that I created my Craigslist ad that said, I will ride your horse for free. And so <laughs> now kind of like my jam, what I like to say is like, you have to find what your skill set is and exploit it in the service of others. And so unintentionally, unknowingly, that's what I did at a young age. And so here I am with this Craigslist ad and I have these yahoos calling me um, <laughs> with their green broke, unbroke horses that haven't been touched or ridden in, in five to 10 years. And I'm just the happiest little thing driving all over God's country, trying to like just riding these horses. And I can't tell you how many times I got bucked off or thrown off, flipped over on, um, but it never stopped me. It's kind of like you just, you live and you learn and you fail forward and you learn from your mistakes. And so despite the fact that I never had any professional instruction or education, the horses are what taught me everything that I know today. And I mean, fast forward, essentially I was able to, I, I was able to create a seven figure business buying training and selling horses all over the country and then I went on to accidentally open one of Michigan's largest public trail riding companies. And nice. I, and it's, and I don't even, I don't even say that to say like, oh, hey, look at me. I more say it as a way to be like, empower people. So now I'm on a mission to just teach everybody about the law of attraction and quantum physics and the fact that we live in this, we, we live in a vibrational universe, an attraction based universe. And that what you focus on, you create, you attract, where your focus goes, your energy flows. And I really like love empowering people that they can truly be, do, have anything that they can dream of. All they have to do is, is bridge that with belief, belief in themselves and trusting the process. And then essentially, once you have that belief, it's just implementing the, the tangible steps, the mechanics to get you there. So you um, know it's weird. I don't mean to interrupt you, uh, but I wanted to get this before we get. 
I don't know if you can see my phone. Can you read that? Where your thoughts go, your focus goes. Where your focus goes, your action goes. Where your action goes, your growth goes. Yes, absolutely. That is so weird. That posted that today. And here you just said that. That's awesome. I love that. Yes. As soon <laughs> as I cool. saw, as soon as I was reading about your podcast, I knew that our missions were very much so in alignment and I, I really enjoyed your energy. So well, fun fact, I have never gotten on a horse ever. My daughter has, she's been trained. She can ride. Well, I've never got on a horse. So you, <laughs> that's where the mission went like this. I'll wait over <laughs> here and watch you. <laughs> I'm not afraid of them. I just really never had opportunity. When I was growing up, I didn't have the opportunity to do that stuff. And now that, you know, we grew up, she's grown up, she's had the opportunity to do that, you know, excuse me, based on some of the work we've done and to enable us to afford to be able to do that for her. So I just never did. Maybe I'll do that someday. You know, that's a beautiful. Matter. I feel like, I feel like horses are just one of those things. It's like a seed that's, that you're born with. And yeah. that it's like, when you have the horse bug, look out, like there's, it's not something that you can easily just turn your, turn your head away from or walk away from, like it's in you. And so there are some people that I do encounter that they're just like, no, like, I just don't like horses. And I'm, it's very, it's hard for me to relate, to be honest. I don't understand it, but I do, uh, <laughs> I do know that, you know, they have their other passions that fill them up. So they got to follow yeah. their heart. I, I, I like horses. I just never ridden. I pet them, play with them. I just never got on one. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I watched too many films of things going wrong. So I'm like, I'm going to be the guy, like you said, you flipped off. You got flipped. That's me. I'm thinking that's going to be me. I don't want to do that. But anyway, uh, let's talk about some of your coaching and stuff. Let's talk about, um, I noticed when I was looking over your information, you had something that stood out to me. And I feel like this is where a lot of people are in their lives, me doing a fitness coach and some of the other things I coach people on. Why do you feel like people are stuck or defeated or depressed? Oh, well, a lot of my clients will come to me and they say that they feel stuck. And what I like to relate is that if people are stuck, it's usually because they're stuck in a story. Mm. And that, and, and a lot of people don't realize that when you take a step back and we begin to analyze our lives, our lives are nothing more than a sequence of patterns that we continue to repeat over and over and over again. We're creatures of habit yes. and we are exactly where we are today based on every single decision we've made up until this point. So once we realize that everything that we, that a belief is nothing more than a thought that we keep thinking and our lives are nothing more than a story that we keep telling ourselves and everyone around us. So it's pretty wild to think that all we have to do is shift our perspective and change our story. And we can start to create and live a totally different future. And that's when you step into the world of, of quantum physics and this idea that reality is a very pliable, subjective, malleable thing, and that you don't have to be defined by your past traumas or current situation. Like the, the, this illusion of the 3D reality that we're experiencing right now is pretty much it is is created based on all of the past experiences and thoughts that we've had and that's why the power of the now present moment is where we carry all of our power in because every moment is a manifested miracle and so therefore every time that we think a positive thought or speak positively we're very intentionally creating the reality that we want to experience and so that's what essentially I help people do is rewire their subconscious minds so that way they can do a giant pattern interrupt, interrupt and begin to recognize the stories that they've been telling themselves and how to step outside of them and how to rewrite the narrative. But a lot of that is embedded from our subconscious conditioning. And so it takes it takes time and it takes a lot of repetition, mm -hmm. but it absolutely can be done. Gotcha. Tell me a little bit about what you define as peak emotional stress. Peak emotional state. 
Oh, state. Okay. I thought that was stress. All right. My bad. <laughs> peak emotional. I'm reading this. I thought it said stress. I'm like, how do you get to peak emotional stress? So that makes sense. So what is the peak emotional state? So a peak emotional state is if you can ever, like, you can close your eyes and think back of a time when you felt absolutely unstoppable, when you were full of passion, full of purpose, you knew exactly where you were going and you felt like nothing could stop you. And those moments of peak emotional states, we're going to make very different decisions than if we're operating at a low vibrational state. If we're feeling full of fear, worry, guilt, anxiety, we're going to be thinking different thoughts, speaking different things, and essentially making totally different decisions. And so then the question to be asked is, how many hours a day do you spend in a peak emotional state? How many hours a week do you spend in that state? How many hours a month do you spend in that state? And like I said before, like we're all so conditioned that we don't even realize that we've conditioned ourselves to live in fear, to live in, in lack mindset, to live in scarcity. And a lot of times like feeling anxious or feeling angry or feeling frustrated or feeling overwhelmed, we've been living in those states for so long that we start to take those on as our own personality. And that's how we define ourselves. Interesting. So, Interesting. And so once, so a lot of times people forget what, what freedom feels like, what peace, clarity, abundance, um, joy, bliss, like all of these like high vibrational feelings. It's like, we don't practice them. And so I'm a huge advocate of, I teach a lot of different techniques and tools, but one of them is meditation. And so every single morning, like that's my non-negotiable, I wake up and I meditate. And so again, you're quieting your mind and you're allowing yourself to feel that peace of mind, that serenity, that joy, that bliss. And then like the definition of meditation is to become aware of. And so meditation teaches you how to become aware of yourself, of your thoughts, of your emotions, of your feelings, of your reactions. And so once you have that awareness, that practice awareness, then you're able to identify those patterns that are no longer that that haven't been serving you. Awesome. <clears throat> so what's the next step after you've mastered that? So we so I teach a 16 week, it's like a robust 16 week program. And there's three pillars. And the first pillar is pretty much what we just talked about, which is state, or like I say, energy, understanding that we live in a vibrational attraction-based universe. And that when you're able to control your state, you're able to essentially control your and create your reality. Um, the second pillar is desire, knowing with absolute clarity what you want. So many people... Um, I can't tell you how many times I've sat down and talked to different clients and I'd be like, okay, so if you, my favorite question to ask people is if you had all of the resources at your fingertips and you could have anything exactly how you'd want it, what would you want? What would your life look like? And almost nine out of 10 times, they start listing off everything that they don't want, which is hilarious because society and the news, they just have us conditioned to focus on what we don't want. And just like we said earlier, where your focus goes, your attention, your, your, where your focus goes, your energy flows. And that's what they're unintentionally attracting to them are all the things that they don't want because they keep thinking about it and speaking about it. So what we do is we teach people how to discipline their focus on what they do want by creating a vision. And so what we do is we extract their vision from them because it's kind of like, have you ever gotten a car without putting your location in the GPS? Like you're not going to get, it's, <laughs> you're going to make like a lot of lo wrong turns, <laughs> but when you have a lot, <laughs> so, um, but when you have a vision and you're reading it every single day or every single week, what happens is you start activating your RAS or your reticular activating system. And so think about, for example, let's say you just bought a Tesla and you're all excited about the brand new Tesla you're driving around. And then you start noticing Teslas everywhere. Like everywhere you look, you see Teslas. Why is that? That's because 
you've activated your reticular activating system. And so what you seek, you shall find. And right. so when you're, when you're being intentional and in reading your vision every single day or every single week, what happens is you're training your subconscious to start to bring you closer to your goals, your collapse absing timelines and you're 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 seeing different ways um for different opportunities to present themselves when you might not have been looking for them previously so and then with the with the vision then we also teach like the proper use of imagination because as you probably already know so many people will use their imagination in all the wrong ways and so many people <laughs> will list off Again, like every single possibility that could go wrong. I used to, um, I got, after I graduated college, I got scooped up into the corporate world for three years and I had the world's worst boss. I mean, he was the most negative, pessimistic, miserable person you could ever imagine to be around. And that was extremely hard, especially for somebody like me, who's like, I'm like radiating positivity. Right. And so- <laughs> He was probably just annoyed to be around me as I was to him. And I remember like we would have to travel. Remember we were traveling all over the country and we would get somewhere and he would literally start naming off every single thing that could go wrong. And I'm like, oh, Justin, I'm like, don't you realize that in your focus and attention to detail of exactly what you don't want, you're literally calling those things to you. And I mean, a lot of, you know, he was of the mind like, oh, that's hocus pocus woohoo stuff. But I mean, it's, it's universal law. And once you start reading the books of Neville Goddard and Napoleon Hill and Dr. Wayne Dyer and all of the greats who've studied how that we live in an attraction-based universe, it starts to make sense. Um, and then we dive into intention setting with the, with the vision yeah. And intention setting is like my all time favorite thing, because then it's like you get your hands in the putty and then you start to just like have fun with it. And it's like we teach a lot of different strategies or intention setting techniques. And one of them, for example, is every, like we do monthly intentions. And so let's say we are going to do our March intentions. So on March 1st, you take out a piece of paper. And you write, today is Sunday, March 31st. And I am so happy and so grateful that I accomplished blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then we go through the five realms of the five areas of vision, which are health and fitness, relationships, which can be any relationship, whether it's a spouse or a coworker or children, um, finances, whether it's investments or work, um, and then fun and lifestyle, because I feel like life is meant to be celebrated and lived and enjoyed. And if you're not living intentionally and having fun, what's the point? Yeah. And then the, <laughs> then the fifth one is spirituality. And that's kind of, I put like self-development and growth in that. And, and I feel like spirituality kind of encapsulates all of them because when you are connected spiritually, it will improve every single area of your life. So when we do our monthly intentions, you write out different goals that you have already accomplished in each area. So let's say you want to lose um, seven pounds this month. You say, and I'm so, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude for effortlessly losing seven pounds. I'm so grateful that I was able to enjoy such delicious, healthy food. I'm so grateful for looking in the mirror and feeling pride and self-love. I'm so grateful for the way my spouse can't keep his hands off me and, and this amazing feeling of how I fit in my clothes. And, and I'm so excited that the dress that I bought two years ago now fits me amazing. So, and so again, it's just like you start using your imagination in, in vivid ways that you hadn't before. And you start writing it down. And Clarence, it's incredible when you start writing these things down, even things that like you didn't even think were a possibility for you, how the universe just bends to meet your every wish and desire. It's kind of like intention setting is what I like to call putting your, your order in with the universe 
and then stepping into the receiving mode and allowing those things to flow to you. So you are also a public speaker. Tell me about a time you were on stage, um, because this is very popular for people who are doing career changes or moving up the corporate ladder, if you will, the fear of speaking publicly. Did you have that fear or were you always just, I'm a bubble of joy, I can talk in front of anybody. How, and if you did have that fear, how'd you overcome it? Um, I would say, I would say that I love people and I love talking. I'm a Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> My sister's a Gemini, trust me. I know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I already know. Um, um, which one call it? And I would say that I got I got used to talking to people in front of large groups with my horseback riding business mm. just because when I had to grow like when 2020 hit and everything was closed down, nobody was allowed to work and everyone was trapped inside of their house, people wanted to get out. And the only thing for them to do, well, the only thing they could do was like outdoor recreational activities. And it just so happened that when you were on a horse, you're six feet away from each other. <laughs> you're so, six feet away from a lot of things, like the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and that. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, what you call it? So when, when 2020 happened, we blew up. And I had to, I mean, I immediately had to hire over 10 employees. Wow. And that was a big stepping stone for me because I used to be a solopreneur who I, I did everything. Everything fell on my shoulders. So when the demand became so great that I literally couldn't, I couldn't support it, that I had to expand my team. And so when I had to expand my team, then I had to hold team meetings and I had to put, I had to put meetings together. And then as the business itself grew, um, every single ride that goes out, we do a uh, instructional safety speech. So maybe like in, you know, when I started this company seven or eight years ago, there were maybe two or three people, but now there might be 15 or 20 people that I'm talking to multiple times a day, giving the speech and explaining like who we are, what, you know, what to expect and, and all the ins and outs of the ride. Um, I would say, so that definitely built my confidence up, but stepping on stage for the first time was, very, I would say it was very intimidating. I was, I was blessed to have that background. So once I started talk, once I jumped into it, then I, I got, I jumped into the flow of it, but sometimes we're met with imposter syndrome. Who am I to be doing this? And then sometimes it's just overwhelming and scary. And I think the best advice that I was given was that don't make it about you. Don't worry about what you look like. Don't worry about what you sound. Just know that you have a beautiful message to deliver and that if you can help one person, that's all that matters. If you can positively impact, inspire, influence, empower one person, then you've done your job. And so I try to take the focus off of me and put it on everybody else. Who can I show up and who and how can I serve them? So that's what I tell myself, like, I'm not showing up for me. I'm showing up for everybody else. Hmm. I love that. Um, do you teach in person or is your coaching virtual? Um, actually, we do both. Um, I would say a lot. Well, I'd say I've done, obviously, I've done speaking nationally on mm -hmm. stages across the country. Um, and that's always been fun. And I've also led meditations in front of different groups of people, which is always a very like powerful, positive experience. Um, but the coaching that we do is primarily online. Um, we have group coaching and it's a, it's a 16 week program where we're helping people rewire their subconscious minds with, with mind hacking tools and techniques, transforming their identity and helping them take massive action towards their goals. So who is an ideal fit for your business? Who's the perfect avatar? Anybody who wants more, anybody who feels like they were meant for more and they're hungry for it, whether okay. it's a man or woman, um, we have both, but people that 
are ready to take their lives to the next level. Okay. And the cool thing is that it, whether it's, it's health, wealth, love, relationships, finance, if you implement these universal laws, it will catapult you to the next vibrational playing field. It's pretty amazing. And we've seen it time and time again. What I'm hearing is a lot of mindset. Um, I think one of the biggest things that changed the success I had my clients was their mind. Because I always tell people, most people know that eating donuts all day is not going to be good for your figure, your health. Most people can go on YouTube and figure out how to do a bench press or a squat with some relative <laughs> success, you know. But the discipline the commitment to the daily habits is mindset. Um, a lot of people in my demographic that I coach are coming out of newly single. Maybe they still have some kids at home uh, or a new career and they get busy. How do you overcome some of those excuses in terms of, oh, I'm too busy or, oh, this is new. I'm alone now. I don't have my husband or I don't have my wife. How do you deal with that when you're shaping people's minds? Well, I found that it's really hard to want something for somebody else. Yes. So, <laughs> and that so you're true. never, you're never going to change anybody. You can't want it badly enough for another person. So what we like to teach people is that you have to condition your mind to desire more. And it's not to want more. It's to desire more. Explain the difference. So you might have an idea and the idea comes into your mind and you can either like that idea or not like that idea. You can either want that idea or not want that idea. Wanting is easy. Wanting doesn't take any effort. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody wants a six pack, but not everybody. Really <laughs> <laughs> There's some guys that are proud of their bellies. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and you know what? Some women aren't attracted to guys that have six pack and super fit. Some girls like a guy who's more bulky or, or more, you know, more muscular. It just depends. Yeah. And I definitely agree with that. Yeah. But I always pause people because those are some of the conceptions. Cause what someone will say to me, all right, I'm interested in having you help me, but I don't want a six pack. I don't need this. And it's like, well, we got to start with what, what's important to you, not what the general norm is. You know what I mean? But go ahead. I, I interrupted you. No worries. No worries. Um, So there's a want, which anybody can want anything, but mm -hmm. a want doesn't take any, doesn't take any work. The want is something that is, that lives inside of your conscious mind. Converting a want to a desire means moving the want from the conscious mind to the subcon subconscious mind. And you know that the want has successfully converted into a desire when you become obsessed with it, when your behavior changes. You yes. know something is a desire once behavior is altered. So a lot of it is like so many people are content with where they're at and they're satisfied in their own comfort zone and they don't realize that their comfort zone is holding them holding them back from from greatness from unlocking their infinite potential for what they were really made for what they were meant to do and that's why like Ed Milet he talks about blissful dissatisfaction where he's in a state of 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 blissful like he he's happy he's operating in and high vibrational emotions but he's in a constant state of dissatisfaction in the sense that like he always is pushing himself to want more, to be better, to do more, to serve more people. And so I think it's really important that like, to, to, I think it's really important to understand that our mind is not meant to, to keep us happy and fulfilled. Our mind is meant to keep us alive and keep us safe. And what that means is that our mind likes to keep us very tucked in safely inside of our comfort zones. But unfortunately, we can't grow when we stay inside of our comfort zones. So it's my job to challenge everybody to step outside of that comfort zone. So that way they're growing into the best version of themselves mentally, physically, financially, and spiritually.
So you seem very versed and educated on this subject. Beside the book you mentioned previously, who's a mentor for you? Who's somebody that you recognize as had a lot of influence on your thinking? Um, so when I was inside of the, when I, when I worked inside of the cube doing Excel spreadsheets from sunup to sundown, um, <laughs> believe it or not, I was wicked at some Excel spreadsheets. Um, <laughs> um, I would put my ear pods in and I would listen to Dr. Wayne Dyer for okay. hours and hours and oh. hours. Okay. So Good I would. Yeah, so I would say that he has played a fundamental role in the person that I've become and and he's shaped a lot of my belief system. So I'm very grateful to him. And then through listening to his work, I stumbled upon Abraham Hicks and I attended my first Abraham Hicks workshop when I was 22 years, I started listening to them when I was 18. And I went to my first Abraham Hicks workshop when I was 22. And I thought I had, and like, I had already implemented so many of their teachings into my daily life that I'm like, rock on, let's go. I couldn't wait to go to the workshop, but it was at the workshop that I realized I was missing something. And the missing piece was meditation. So that workshop is what kicked off my meditation career. And once I started meditating, it was like, a, it, it, it just skyrocketed every area of my life and took it to a whole nother level. So if there's one thing that I would recommend everybody start implementing in their life today, that's going to create monumental success, it would be gift yourself 10 minutes every morning and meditate. I love it. I love it. So I mean, I saw your Instagram and you're doing a lot of stuff. How do you balance all of it out? What is your tool to, to balance things out and keep perspective? Because you got to have, like you said, you got to have fun. Um, you're working out, you're speaking. You're, how many horses do you have? Well, it depends on the day. <laughs> do you rent them or do you own all the horses? I So I buy, train and sell horses all year long. Wow. And then what we do is we buy, so... <sighs> I just, so like, I just sold a horse to Canada last week, for example, but, and then I just bought two more last week and then we're buying three more next week. So I'll buy them and use and, and work them, train them, incorporate them into our public trail riding company, into our lesson program. We do, we offer leases, we do uh, photo shoots, pony parties, the cities will commission us to come out and do like Labor Day events or, or pony rides with the carnivals and stuff like, so we do all like pretty much all things horses we do. And then we'll pretty much, we'll buy horses, incorporate them into the program, get to know them, and then eventually cycle them through, list them for sale and find them their forever home. And so it's a lot of fun for me because if I had to work with the same 20 horses day in and day out, I would probably get really bored. Um, yeah. But the yeah. fact the fact that like, I, like for me, there's nothing more exciting and nothing more gratifying than being able to buy a horse that might have a, a sketchy background or might have some, I, whatever. I don't know why I would get the sketchy horse. I don't know. I just feel like I would get the sketchy horse with the sketchy background. <laughs> Now you gotta, you gotta you gotta be intentional with your that horse is not really smiling or saying anything. Yeah, Claire, you get on that one. You gotta write it out. You gotta say, I had so much fun horseback riding. My horse was a perfect angel. He took the absolute best care of me. He was sturdy and sure-footed. We trotted and had a magical time. We're best friends. Can't wait to ride him again or something like that. So, but uh, anyway, so. During the winter time in Michigan, obviously equestrian activities slow down substantially. So we'll probably go down to like maybe like 18 to 22 horses. And then in the summertime, when we ramp up, we're going to be closer to 45 to 50 horses. So how do you balance all this out? This is a lot. I thought I was busy. You're doing a lot. With people you have to put. So You're that's. A team. Yes, exactly. I've learned that I can't, that I've learned there's only so much time in a day. And I'm one of those people that like, I'm like the yes girl. I'm like, if it sounds fun and exciting, like, yeah, count me in. But I had to like, take a step back and realize like, where's the best and the highest use of my time. And then 
understanding that once I started building my team and putting the right people in the right positions, believe it or not, and this is going to sound pretty crazy to some entrepreneurs out there, but I promise you that when you trust the process and you start putting people in the positions that you don't want to do, I promise you that they will do a better job than you did if in those positions. And then your business or your company will be better and stronger because of that, because you're putting the right people in those spots. So I definitely would not be able to do the things that I do without my team. So I'm very grateful and very blessed to be surrounded by such an awesome support system. So balance, mindset, meditation, a good team. Obviously you're into working out. You see that on your, your Instagram, you're doing a lot of that. Um, so people wondering, probably thinking, this girl's got it all. She's got the dream life. She's taking care of a horse. She's managing a seven-figure business. What's what's a habit that you personally don't like about yourself that you constantly struggle with? That no one knows. Yeah, because when we come on here, everyone thinks, oh, no one talks about their own little bad little, and I don't yeah. like the word bad, but like, what's a habit that you wish you could just stop doing, but you just, you held on to it. It's maybe not that detrimental. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think which one we're going to pick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess the first the first thing that like immediately pops into my head is that my entire life I have always struggled with uh with self-love and like a positive self-image. Yeah. Like mm. um yeah, which is pretty wild. So I would always like every day every day waking up and like every day you wake up and then you check yourself out in the mirror and you're like, mm, how does my stomach look today? Mm, like, how do like, how do I look at this angle? Like, I, I don't know if that's like just the chick thing or what. It's everybody like, thing now. Have you seen Instagram? <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> doing that. <laughs> you're doing certain poses. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I would say that I have been on the last, probably the last four years, a very intentional journey of self-love and in in really transforming that voice in my head because that voice in my head used to be my worst enemy and used to say really really mean ugly things yeah. that i would like if it was a person i would have kicked that person out of my life a long time ago and i've been like you do not talk to me like that and so it's like why do we allow that voice in our head to talk to us that way um and it wasn't, I think it, when I went, to, I recently went to the Tony Robbins uh, date with destiny. Yeah. It's like a six day of all immersive event starts at 10 o'clock in the morning, goes till three o'clock in the morning. Um, that was, I, I feel like that allowed me to really take inventory of my core values and then the rules associated with each of them. And then being like, oh, wait, if I'm looking at the rules, that I have like unconsciously set up in my mind for like what success looks like, I'm setting myself up for failure every single time. So it's again, like getting really honest with yourself and figuring out like where you're at, where your beliefs lie, and then rewriting the rules around them and being like, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to be so hard on myself. Like I'm going to very intentionally speak to myself with, with loving kind words. And, um, and that was definitely probably like, that's been a big area of growth in my life. Love it. A lot of self-reflection I'm hearing. So that's good. That's good. I think if you're not evolving and changing all the time and you've hit the ceiling, you're done. You should always be evaluating and changing. I call what you talked about, uh, stinking thinking. Um, a lot of the people I encounter have, and we, I think we all do. We all have that inner critic that tells us we're not good enough. I think the, as soon as you have an idea, unless you evolve past that, is that little voice that you can't do that. What makes you think you do that? Uh, what makes you think you can, you know, get on a horse and lead people, you know? So we, I think we all do that. And I think that's a part of evolving. You are, you're constantly getting better and better to overcome those things. So I think that's really powerful. Um, what are you? What are your personal and um, business goals for this year? I think this year is really to just. Imp- I mean, this year is my year of service. So I want to show up in big, bold, beautiful ways, and just 
give back. I feel like if you're blessed, be a blessing. And I've been fortunate enough to be blessed in many areas of my life. So that's why I've been really intentional about finding amazing podcast hosts such as yourself. Wow. And I just, I'm here to just like pour out to as many people as possible and, and spread positive, powerful messages of empowerment, encouraging people and like letting them know you're no, no different than me. If I can do it, you can do it. And here are some tips and tricks along the way to make your life easier. And if you want a crash course with accountability in community, then, you know, follow me on the socials and, and join our community. And we're happy to give you a leg up. Speaking of communities, where can people find you to find out more about your coaching? Um, when is it, does it run constantly or is it like segmented after 16 weeks, you take a break and then you offer another, or is it constantly running? Um, it's constantly running. Okay. So, and we've actually, we just put together a two week, I'm sorry, we just put together a condensed free training of the 16 week program. So if anybody kind of wants to dive right in and fast track and learn what it's all about and what are things that they can start implementing in their daily routine today, that way they can start seeing a difference tomorrow. Um, the link to that is the ultimate success blueprint.com slash bit over 40. And I'm sorry, there's no, the it's just ultimate success blueprint.com slash fit over 40. And that way your audience will be able to check that out and uh, download their free copy. Very good. I love it. Well, thank you for your time today. I don't even know how you fit me in, but 40 horses, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and the schedule of yours. Well, we appreciate you coming on and sharing your thoughts and hopefully someone will you know, be inspired by what you're doing. I definitely am. I, I saw your background. I really was excited to chat with you. So this was good. So I had yeah. such an amazing time. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Clarence, for having me. Absolutely. All right, everybody. I will see you all again next week. It's been over 40. I'm Coach Clarence.